Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? Welcome to Blake's Garage. I'm um, going to wait for people to jump on in here, but I just want to talk about, uh, well, what we got going on. So there are some new shirts on the website, wrenchon.com. If you guys have not checked out those new shirts, I got the uh, the Birdie 30 shirts. Um, we got the new pixel art style ones and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we got a couple people in here now. All right, so... What I wanted to talk about today is uh, some Subaru parts. As you guys know, I was working on a uh, White Wing STI's Subaru. And hey, guys, by the way, uh, we are live. Where are you guys from? Uh, ask me any questions. Just throw them down there in the comments, and we can make this a little bit better. Utah driver, what's up, dude? How's it going? So, um, yeah, I'm going to do... I'll talk about the Subaru thing in a minute. Uh, first thing I'm going to do got this month's petrol box so I'm gonna rip this thing open real quick uh, sometimes I just find these easier to kind of just do live and that way you guys can talk what's up Arden Hammer what's up Daplo Matt 23 or something like that sorry if I butchered that one um, the petrol box right there you got the cool little flyer with all the info New York what's up man how you guys doing what are you guys doing today all right so first thing we got in the petrol box. Oh, I was like reading this upside down. I don't know if it's backwards for you guys, but anyways, um, screw pop. So it's a screwdriver plus it uh, opens bottles. You can put it on your keychain. At work, not working. Always the best thing to do. What's up, Bryce from Oakland? How's it going, man? Bench made knife. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we're gonna get down to that like Subaru part in a in a minute. You drive a 2011. Legacy premium sweet man. I used to have a uh, 2012 Legacy premium and uh, When will we do a live show on the e30? I don't know we could do that soon. Maybe I could do that like Sunday or something Hey, Bert Bert wants down Well, hey there guys. I just wanted to say hello to everyone um What's up? How you guys doing? And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go like get some water All right, so the second thing we got, I don't have this. Chemical guys, let's see what this says. Lightning fast stain extractor, all right. Um, so, yeah. Faded interior fabrics, which is something I talked about on my Instagram the other day. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I post a lot of like current stuff on Instagram, so it's at Blake's Garage. Make sure to follow me there. We'll probably be doing some uh, giveaway stuff in the future too, so, you know, it's always good. North Dakota. Nice. How cold is it in freaking North Dakota, guys? Please let me know. Uh, built like a brick shit house. Okay, you're talking about your uh, your legacy. Yeah, I know those things. Those things uh are definitely a lot better than the uh, turbo engines, I will say. All right. So what else do we got here? We got an interior carpet brush. So along with, well, I just like I just dropped everything, but. Anyways, negative 11, oh my god. And that's Fahrenheit, correct? Uh, that's not uh, Celsius, is that true? Uh, chemical guys, this interior brush goes along with this. So they sent me both things, so you can really like scrub that down. That's awesome, nice, coarse, high quality brush. I love getting all the detail products in the, the petrol box. Let me know, do, do any of you guys have petrol box? Do you guys, you guys mess around with it? Uh, Boons? I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe that's a spot, Nathaniel Boons. Uh, always a must. Okay, coasters. These are freaking sick. If you guys have not seen these, these are probably one of my favorite things. Uh, this is an official Rotiform one. Uh, I have a few others right here. These are my old ones. Boom, boom, boom. Super sick. Um, definitely like these and yeah, so that's good. Uh, what else do we got? We got a little card from a speed shop. We got the Honest Speed Shop sticker. We got some little card thing. Some air freshener. We got the petrol box right here. The Reader's Right of the Month. I always put these on my toolboxes. And the shirt for this month. Land of the Fast home of the brave 
honest speed shop. Okay, cool. So that is a, a pretty sweet box. So we're going to get down to uh, what I was going to talk about. So if you guys don't know, um, I was um, basically parting out Rodell's uh, White Wing STI. If you guys have not checked out his channel, I recommend to check it out. But I took his car pretty much all back to stock. So um, this is one of those parts that I was just amazed on. I had to get a bunch of little random stuff because as you guys know, that car is like turbo swap. So actually putting it back to stock was uh, pretty complicated just due to the fact of uh, lots of parts missing because things were modified. So definitely had to make a few parts runs to the parts store, but I'm gonna show you the hose that cost $300 at Subaru. Now this is a, uh, this is a Subaru. This is not the uh, Subaru version. This is the Grimspeed version. But this little guy right here, three hundred dollars, and they gave me two—they gave me two hoses in here. So I just want to know if you guys know about this gold that's happening. If you ever get your intercooler changed out, keep an eye out for the shop to make sure they give you back that stock elbow. All right, that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. So we got a couple couplers or uh, warm clamps or whatever. Not this one right here. Can I install the oil catch can without a tune? Yeah, you can. Oil catch can will not make a difference on a tune unless you make a, uh, a vacuum leak, but I definitely do recommend it. This, okay, Subaru makes this in red. It's a STI part. It was something like, I had a bunch of random bolts and they told me at the Subaru dealership, they were like, oh, 528, 32. And I was like, um, okay, um, I, think you, I think you guys added it up wrong. Uh, like $5, it's like registered, oh, $5, that must be the bullets. No, $500. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh yeah, this hose, $300. This hose here, I think I paid 67 for like all this stuff. So yeah, that is like the top secret hose from uh, Subaru that I guess they always kind of try to keep. Um, They'll usually keep the hose, and uh, how can they justify that price? I don't even know. The, the stock one rips a lot, and it's freaking crazy. So what I've heard, and what my buddies told me, is if you ever see a stock intercooler with the hose on it, right, for sale on Craigslist, buy that freaking thing. Uh, because the hose alone is probably worth like 200 bucks, which is insane. Just I'm just talking about the... Uh, you know, the Subaru one. Let me, uh, I'll show you guys on the computer real quick. Um, do you guys have any questions about that car or any, uh, like, any stuff like that? Dealership is privately owned. This is why. Uh, no, I mean, it's a made a, I don't know. It's a made a Subaru dealership. It was not, as far as I know, this is like a, it's a, it's a common thing. Um, hold on. Subaru. Uh, intercooler. Hose. We're gonna look it up. So, do you guys want to maybe see like my camera setup? I know I was kind of talking about uh, going over my camera setup. I know a few people wanted to see that. Yeah, it is a ripoff, totally. Um, stock. Let's see, coupler. I'm trying to find it on them. Um, trying to find it, the real one on the website maybe 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 i don't know if you guys care i mean there's a there's a fake one right there um there's a fake one uh, let's see shopping maybe probably no one even sells the original one because it's it's straight stupid um i guess it's like a common thing this is the one i'm talking about though guys this one right here see how it's red or whatever apparently that's it's not red it's made of gold and <laughs> it's insane so um in case you guys were kind of wondering all right so yeah how can they even justify that price i don't even know yeah exactly guys that's what i'm saying um i had a carbon fiber uh shaft they bucked me 200 bucks uh canadian but parties was 60. I'm confused. So you bought a carbon fiber 
drive shaft for two hundred dollars. That's extremely cheap. Uh, maybe you rephrase that. Uh, CV. Oh, CV shaft. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and most of the parts, you know, I would definitely get at a, a part store or something like that. But this is. That was just like random bolts, nuts and bolts and stuff like that. That's why I was going to the dealership. Um, and yeah, I just needed this and I was thinking, I mean, what would you guys think this cost? I would think at the dealership, maybe 80 bucks. I don't know, but like $300. Oh my God. So that's just one of those things. Okay. Camera setup. So recently, I don't know if you guys have noticed the quality change. Hopefully you guys have. Um, but that doesn't. That doesn't really come in there. What up, JR? How's it going? Um, so I did switch up my camera. A couple videos ago, I got a 5D Mark II, and the thing was pretty good, but I really wasn't, I wasn't like really impressed by the crispness of the quality. And all right, man, see you later. Go to work, have fun working at work. Um, and I really wasn't impressed by the camera quality. So, and that was like about an $1,800 body. And when I mean that, it's just the body alone. If you guys know about camera stuff, so that means, you know, no lens, no microphone, nothing like that. Um, I had it, it didn't really, it had this kind of like fake image stabilization inside the body, and I didn't really find it that amazing for the price point. So I went ahead and returned that camera, and I picked up the Panasonic GH5, which is a really nice body. I think the body is like 1800 or something, and the lens was about like, uh, 1100 bucks pretty soon. I'm gonna do like a full camera bag breakdown, but I just kind of wanted to go over this with you guys um, So it's got the flip out uh, Screen which is awesome, which the 60 mark II had as well um, And my 70d but my 70d broke. That's why I ended up getting a new camera um, And this thing is just really awesome So I've been shooting in 4k probably most of you guys have not been noticing on the camera I've been noticing on my hard drive if you watch it on a TV uh, it definitely looks really, really good. Super crisp. This is an f2.8 lens, so it's like has a really nice shallow depth of feel. Um, this is a 8 to 18 millimeters, so this is a uh, micro four third sensor, which means it's basically a crop ratio of times two. So you uh, you multiply eight, you know, by two. It's a 16 to uh, whatever 18 times two is. I'm not sure, uh, like 30. I don't know, whatever math stuff. Uh, 8, 16, yeah, 36, maybe, something like that, uh, yeah, so, I'm liking it, I'm liking it, liking it quite a bit, so, also, changed up the coilovers on my car, I'm gonna probably be doing a video, did someone say Subaru, I did, I did, I was talking about this hose, $300 at Subaru for this freaking hose, now, this is a Grim Speed one, but, yeah, Love your content. 2013 STI or 2017 STI, I would buy neither. Uh, if you're gonna buy a Subaru, I'd get the regular WRX with the uh, FA, or I'd wait for a new engine to come out. Don't buy a, uh, well, definitely don't buy a used Subaru, 100%. I should be doing a video on that. Never buy a used Subaru, always buy a new Subaru, because guess what? I beat on that Subaru, or someone like me beat on that Subaru, and if it hasn't blown up for them it's probably gonna blow up on you okay uh, any word on the 2020 Subaru I did see that um, if you guys saw it recently too I yeah never buy you see like JR saying down there uh, the the WRX the FA engine is quite a bit better however that thing will explode um, you know with with uh, lots of tuning right if uh, you know you're pushing over I think it's like 350 wheel something like that the connecting rods like to Bend themselves and uh, you know explode those engines so it is a better engine they don't blow up as easily as a let's say a EJ but seriously every single person I know that's had a newer STI I'm not talking about the uh, the EJ 20 I'm talking about the EJ 25 every single person I know every single one has blown up at least two engines if not three i know one guy that's blown up seven i know another guy that's blown up eight um most people are at three or four ej engines so do not buy an sci if you like your money uh if you want to keep it completely bone stock and you want to just drive around like a prius driver and not have fun uh 
uh, I guess buy one, you know, but for me, that's not what I would do. Uh, that's why I bought the S3. I, I really like the way the S3 performs. Yes, it's a $50,000 car compared to a uh, $40,000 car. Look down there in the comments. JR is saying uh, everyone in my area has blown engines too. Exactly. Um, sorry, guys, if you have. <laughs> Good God, seven inches. Sorry, guys, if you have an STI. Um, but like, I got one in front of my house. I got Rodell's car in front of there. That thing's gone through like three engines. Okay. It has. 47,000 miles on the clock. It's a 2015 and that thing had a fully built motor, probably about $25,000 worth of mods into that thing. And it's, you know, it's had issues. Um, when you start modifying, they have issues. The EJ motor is like, it'll run one day, you'll start the car up and it'll just blah, 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 be like flooded out. And the, the, as you guys know, everything needs a tune. Like everything needs a tune. And it's because the ECUs are just stupid. Um, okay, so yeah, that new, what is it, the FA224 or something, some new Subaru engine, I forget, um, they're calling it like a low torque uh, Subaru engine, or sorry, high torque, it has like zilch for horsepower, and I think they put it in some new SUV or something, uh, blew my WRX, blew my STI, see, there you go. Uh, 92k miles runs great, but I'm scared. Yeah, sell that thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, or uh, drive it nicely. Um, so, yeah, I, d I don't know. Um, what was I gonna say about that? Where was I going with that? Oh, that new engine. I don't know. Subaru like came out with their new engine, but it's like if you look at any other manufacturer's new engine, they're a hell of a lot better. They make more power. They make more torque. Uh, you know, the boxer design is cool and all that, but it's like, why are you guys not making something that's just like, holy shit, that thing's sick, and you want it, like, like with the BRZ, I don't know, I think Subaru is kind of dumb, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm hating on them or whatever, but like, a, a, uh, BRZ, why, okay, I'll stop with the Subaru, a BRZ though, why does it not have a turbocharged engine? Uh, why does the new STI not have a new engine? Um, come on, Subaru. Look at every other manufacturer. You got like 350, 400 horsepower out of turbo. Four cylinders or five cylinders or something like that. And uh, give the people what they want because they want it. All right. So, and then there is like that new special edition. I know I'm ranting. There's that new special edition uh, 2018 STI. And it's like, what do you get? You get like an extra like five horsepower and some like little bolt-on parts. Who cares? Who cares? Custom edition will be worth something. But uh, yeah, it's whatever. All right, so with the camera stuff. Yeah, I got the new lens. Uh, microphone. I have the Rode VideoMic Go. This thing uses zero uh, battery power. I like it because you don't have to remember to turn it on. And then I use a Joby Gorilla Pod. Um, for in-car stuff, I use the GoPro Hero 5, which I don't know where that's at at the moment. And I've been liking that camera as well. Um, set up for a computer. Use the MacBook Pro. Um, it's an older one. It's a uh, 2011 model, 16 gigs of RAM, 2.2 gigahertz, i7. 240 uh, gigabyte SSD and a 512 megabyte uh, video card. It's a dual graphics card. So yeah, um, nothing super special there. Let's see if you guys had any extra comments down here. Um, let's see. Where's Subaru going with this? Where's the Subaru going with this? I don't know. Finish the camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, there is also a new engine and not just a modified. Yeah, I think. I think that they're they are gonna do a new engine but I don't know what do you guys what what power levels would you guys like to see I'd like to see at least 350 horsepower from that thing and you know close to 350 foot-pounds of torque if you're gonna call it an STI that's what I call it because most of most of like the other standard cars are pushing out close to 300 horsepower now for like their you know tip-top model okay Ford Focus RS uh, my buddy Brandon's car you guys saw so much um, that thing went through a uh, head gasket issue and now it's uh, it, it came through one more uh, recall after the head gasket issue and it just had problems from there on 
when getting warranty work done, it just really sucks when you get it done from the dealership because you are left up to, well, whoever the heck is working on your car and you better hope that they care. And a lot of time, uh, they're just trying to get that money. They're just trying to get it done and get that warranty work out of their hair. So things can be missed. It's not, I don't feel that it's the same quality as going to like a privately owned shop where they really care. They're gonna, you know, make sure that that thing runs well and they're gonna put their name back and behind it. Whereas like a dealership, it's, it's the dealership. They just kind of, you know, go back and forth. So uh, that car was up for another recall actually. And Brandon's like, nope, not doing that. And he actually just got rid of it the other day. So there's actually going to be a new build and it'll be a funny build uh, just because of all the stuff I've been talking about recently. But you guys will see that probably in the future. I'll be doing some uh, some videos on that with um, M45 Automotive. So that will be cool. They have a really good shop up there. I want a dual clutch transmission. Yeah, so like dual clutch transmissions are freaking awesome. I know everybody just talks shit like, oh... You need the manual transmission, you're gonna hate the dual clutch. Oh my god, it's so horrible. No, actually the dual clutch has been amazing. It's um, really good. It does pretty much everything you want it to do. When you throw it into manual mode, paddle shifters do what you want it to do. I mean, just think about it. When you go out and buy a new Ferrari, what's it got in it? Does it have a manual? No, doesn't. You know, would a manual option be cool? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I do like driving manual. I know how to rev match. I know how to heel toe downshift. I do that at every chance I get, okay? Like I'm talking driving through the streets. I rev match every single gear and I heel toe at every single stoplight. So PDK, yeah, exactly. I've driven a couple of Porsches with a PDK. It's freaking nuts. You have launch control, something you don't have uh, with a, you know, with a regular manual car. Or if you do, it's not, it's just not as good put the cars head by head head to head especially with the turbocharged car with the uh, dual clutch transmission you can stay in that power band no drop off in the uh you know in the torque or anything like that because it's not blowing off in between gear shifts and, and dropping those boost levels so you really get just a the full punch um drove a gt3 rs the other day and that thing was freaking sick um you know and pdk transmission only in that thing and why? Because the PDK is amazing. Um, the Audi is a great transmission and BMW makes a great transmission. Speaking of transmissions, we're going to be changing it up on the E30 hopefully soon. Um, thinking about doing an engine swap and transmission swap at the same time. So that's coming up uh, hopefully pretty soon, guys. So, yeah. Um, which leads me why... To ask why don't you put a why don't Subaru put in the SDI I don't know what that means hots on thoughts on the Honda Civic SI the new one's cool the type R is, is cool um, I'm not a huge Civic fan but like I'd never buy one well I had one I should say and it was just for uh, just for driving around yeah chase I'm thinking of doing an s52 actually maybe uh, would you recommend the Z3 rack upgrade for daily driving? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yes. Heard it's too twitchy. The people that are saying that it's too twitchy are... I don't know. They're babies. They don't like steering response, apparently. You guys ever driven, like, a Mini Cooper? If you've driven, like, a Mini Cooper, right? You drive a Mini Cooper, you give it, like, this much steering input? Yeah, the car is doing something. Personally, I want the car to do something like that. I like that go-kart feel when you grab the steering wheel and you turn it, it goes... Not like an old school tire where you like turn it this much and it's it's not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you said uh, M50. So Chase is talking about I could do an M50 or uh, S52. Yeah, I thought about doing an M50 but then that engine sold. So I do, I just need to find a setup basically. So that's what I'm waiting for. Um, yeah, perhaps the E46 rack. I mean, if, if you're down with that, like I have the Z3 rack plus I have the Magnus Racing Team bump steer correction kit, which also relocates, adds more steering angle and quickens the steering even more. And I absolutely love the steering. I think that anybody that drives my car um, would, would love it. I want to say I'm going to the channel. Yeah, I'm glad you like the WRX videos. I was like, what's going on here? 
Uh, it's cheaper than all. Why'd you get a sedan and not a coupe? Um, well, because it's different. Everyone has a coupe. Uh, sedans are also less expensive. Um, you look at any, and that's also why I went with an automatic um, because, well, all the manuals are super beat and the sedans are usually beat a lot more. And I like the four door thing. I can shove more stuff in it. Um, you know, I have the roll cage area where I can actually like shove wheels in it. If you have the two door, you're just kind of screwed. Um, why 325, not 318? Because uh, in line six, because BMW. 318's good motor too, though. The, um, it's a little bit lighter and, you know, it still makes good power. So 318 IS is a great car. Uh, why Subaru not putting a dual clutch in the STI? Oh, because they're lame and they're, uh, uh, they do CVT stuff. So sick, get a WRX with the CVT. Yeah, that's the other reason I don't like the new, uh, WRXs as much. Everybody that drives them, I feel like they're all CVTs. And CV so there's a difference. I would rather have a slush box automatic like my BMW has over CVT any day of the week because CVTs are just gross. They suck if you guys have ever driven one. Dual clutch, amazing. Manual, amazing. Regular automatic, I'll put it level three. CVT should never exist unless you're like in a go-kart, basically, like a torque converter. Uh, best first mod to do on a stock STI, um, tires, wheels, brakes, suspension, leave the engine alone, uh, because you'll have a lot of fun with suspension stuff and then you can really rip because straight lines aren't fun, uh, unless you're trying to make big, big horsepower and then you're talking about big, big money. Just asking because a manual transmission to Chicago sucks. Yeah. I mean, if they did a, uh, a dual clutch, that would be great, but I just don't think they have... What other car would they put it in besides like the STI or WRX? I don't know. Um, that's awesome. I'm glad it's I'm glad it's a manual. Yeah, I think that uh, the WRX. I wish they kind of would have stuck with the uh, manual situation. What up, Chuck? Chuck, why'd you get rid of your STI? Let us know. Was it because you needed something different, or was it because they were a pain in the butt? Let us know. Um, yeah. Uh, what tires would you recommend for an STI daily? Uh, depends on where you live. Michelin Pilot Super Sports are great. If you're not, if you want more grip than a Pilot Super Sport, I would recommend RE71Rs. I would recommend uh, the Federal RSRRs. See, T WRX has got it. Which hey, you need to change your name, Chuck. You need to change your name to like T BMW or something. I don't know. You need to change it. No one, it'll it'll be okay. Yeah, Pilot Super Sport 4S, super quiet tires. Um, they are definitely a really grippy tire, but if you want something that's like super grippy for summer performance, RE71Rs, the um, the Federal RSRRs are actually a pretty good tire for the price. I have them on the E30 right now. I have an R888Rs before that. And, uh, and yeah, that's why. Why did I get the S3 over the Golf R? Okay, so primarily my wife drives the S3, in case you guys didn't know that. Um, Track day Chuck, I like it, I like it. Why did I not get a Golf R? Because it's a VW Golf. It's like it's like saying, why did I not buy a Kia? Because it's a Kia, that's why. Okay, why do I not have a Hyundai? Because I don't like Hyundais, all right? So, um, no, but really, the Golf R, why did I not buy the Golf R? Because I never, I seriously never even looked at it. Um, I always have liked Audis. I had an A4 back in the day. I like Audis and BMWs. I've always liked those cars. And uh, yeah, the Audi is just way plusher on the interior. I like the overall look. I don't like the look of a Golf R. When I look at a Golf R, I just go, oh look, some some 16 year old with a, uh, with a Golf. And then it's like, oh, it's a Golf R. Okay, that's cool. It's about as far as it goes. When I see like an Audi, I go, oh damn, that's a nice car. That's that's what I think. Like when I look at it, it's just, it's, it's better. T BMW. Yeah. I don't know. BMW T. T dog. Um, EJ25 and EJ22504. They still use it to the day. That's why. Yeah. See, better idea with going with the, uh, going with the newer one. Uh, might sell the GTR and get an RS3. Dude. Yeah. Go drive one. Go freaking drive one and you will be like, ah, I need it. Um, I wish I would have, I wish we would have waited for an RS3. I should have. Um, when we bought the S3, it was like, I wanted to get rid of that Subaru so freaking bad. I was so over it. Um, and you know, I just, I found, went to the dealership, said, Hey, this is what we want. 
kind of uh, sacrificed on a couple options. Like, I, we wanted it fully loaded, um, and that just didn't exist in the system. So we wanted it a certain way. We wanted it right. Uh, black optics dynamic. We wanted the sports seats. And that was what we primarily got, and we kind of didn't get a few things, and we sacrificed. And next time, we will not do that. We'll probably, like, order one directly from Germany or something like that. Um, but, yeah, when did I get into the BMW E30? Well, I got into it after I blew up, like, two Subaru engines. And, actually, I really disliked the uh, overall look of the E30. Actually, also, after I drove Rodell's uh, Miata at the track at uh, Thunder Hill Raceway, drove his Miata, had a ton of fun, and was like, I need a car like that. I need a momentum car that has a ton of grip, and it's fun to drive. Then uh, I was looking around, and I'm like, I don't want a Miata. Sorry, Miata guys. Um, I'm not going to drive a Miata. That's just me. Um, so next best thing, BMW E30. Nice, lightweight, cool. Everyone likes them. Not a Miata. They don't look at you like, what the? You know, that sort of thing. Um, are parts for Audi outrageously expensive? Eh, no? Yes? I don't know. They're all... Every car, look, this part here from Subaru, $300, okay? So certain, uh, certain things um, are just ridiculously expensive. It, it really all depends on the part. And, you know, there's always auto recyclers that can get you cheaper parts. So are they more expensive than Subaru parts? Yeah, probably. Um, but are they ridiculously expensive? No. I mean, it's all... All the same. You need all-wheel drive. Yeah, all-wheel drive's cool. If you got a GTI, yeah, front-wheel drive. I would definitely get an all-wheel drive. I'd get a Golf R if you're into the GTI scene. Um, you you track the S3, so check your cam follower. Okay, definitely will do. That's an issue on the MB, uh, MBQs or whatever. I didn't really know that. Uh, I'm stage two right now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know those uh, GTIs, they like to spin tires. All drive spin your life. I raced a 2018 STI with my 2000 WRX and smoked the STI. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's seriously why I even get the uh, STI. When you go on S54, when my channel blows up and actually makes money, uh, if you guys don't know, like Subaru or not Subaru, YouTube stuff, yes, I make a little bit of money off of YouTube, right? I make a little bit of money off of affiliate links and stuff like that. However, I make you guys videos like two a week, right? So I'm buying parts. I'm uh, editing video, taking time to edit the video. I've got computer, hard drive space, $3,000 cameras. Not that you need this. You can do it with a cell phone, but you know, I'm sure you guys enjoy high quality stuff. So how much, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. How, uh, how much uh, do you make on YouTube? Basically I make like negative money, right? Because my channel's just not there. I don't have all the views. Um, and yeah, so that is why Chuck, I don't have an S54. S54 is about probably about 12 grand to do the swap, which is a lot of money. And that would probably take me at about close to a year to save up. Um, and I don't think you guys want to just wait around for a year. Fabian, what's up? Hi, said hello to you. What's up, man? STIs are overrated. Yeah. I mean, they do. The big the big difference on the SDI, the only thing that makes a difference to me on the SDI is the uh, the center diff. That is like, you know, the only thing, the, the DCCD and the limited slip differentials. That is like the huge thing. Get a WRX. Uh, if you want to swap that transmission in, get a DCCD controller and get an LSD in the rear. Boom. Ready to go. Thoughts on a LS swap in EX cars? E36, yes. E30, probably not. I've heard, from what I've heard, I've heard people say, oh, I put a uh, LS in my E30 and it totally threw off the weight balance, which may be true, maybe not. I haven't driven one personally, Chuck, so I don't know. But E36, I say yes. Um, those are very well balanced with, a, um, with an LS engine. And if you're thinking about it, eventually, if, I mean, thing is, you can get like $2,500 for your transmission and uh, engine, right, right now. Like, I might even buy it off you if you wanted to sell it to me, if we were closer. Um, but, uh, an LS motor, you know, you can get a junkyard LS motor and pump that thing up, like three, $4,000, and now you got a pretty, you know, pretty reliable monster on your hands with, you know, making 400 horsepower pretty dang easy. And yeah, I mean, so if you did pop the S50 or something like that, an LS would definitely be 
something to step it up to. Reliable power, super cheap to work on, parts available like at every single auto parts store. And that is amazing. Which microfiber drying towel should I use? Um, I use the Costco ones for throwaway towels. Okay, you said drying towels. So um, microfiber USA or auto, auto fiber USA, I think. I did a video a while back. If you guys want to check it out, it was on a pressure washer. Look back in my videos. But there is a towel called the Mother Fluffer XL. Super puffy, super big. I use that thing to dry my car. It's amazing. You can literally do it with the one microfiber. Because if you've ever driv uh, dried a car with a microfiber towel, you know microfibers don't really dry cars. They have to be fully, uh, fully saturated to actually like start to absorb a lot of that water. So, yeah. Where am I from? I am from California, Sacramento, California. Um, so I would definitely buy those. I think it's Auto Fiber USA and they sell like nice detailing kits with like all the microfibers you need. Besides that, Costco microfiber towels, rip the little rip the little tag off of it and they're great for, for what you need. I use them for like everything because I just don't care about them. I, I use them like throwaway towels because they're you know fairly inexpensive and I get them, I clean the car with them on a fresh one and I take it and usually do a second one on the wheels and then after that I'll use it for like cleaning up random like auto parts and stuff like that and then once it's really gross toss it in the trash all right guys so i think i'm gonna take off here uh thanks a lot for stopping in that was the item i was talking about that 300 dollars hose pick up a petrol box if you guys have not um always awesome i always really like their stuff thanks